Big cats are undoubtedly some of the most charismatic of living animals, exuding both fearsome power and elegance all at once, and none better exemplify this than the iconic tigers. Continuing on with the Year of the Tiger series from around the same time last year, I will be covering the remaining three extinct tiger subspecies, with them being discussed alphabetically on a daily basis until they are all covered. I hope you enjoy. Bali tigers were found on the Indonesian island of Bali, a small island near Malaysia and the Philippines, which has an area of approximately 2,175 square miles, making it only slightly larger than Rhode Island. This meant that the population of tigers on the island was not all that large, something that would be a relevant factor in their eventual extinction, although that will be talked about more later. Bali tigers were the smallest out of all the nine subspecies of tiger, with them weighing from around 80 to 100 kilograms, around the same as a large jaguar, and being about half the size overall of the largest tigers, the Bengal and Siberian subspecies. They were found to differentiate themselves from other tigers, mainly the closely related and also extinct Javan tiger, in having brighter fur and a smaller skull with narrower zygomatic arches. Tigers faced immense pressure from people, namely during the Dutch colonial period, with hunting trips being conducted by European sportsmen who were equipped with high-powered rifles. Along with this, palm plantations and irrigated rice fields were established all throughout Bali's rich volcanic northern slopes around the island, reducing and fragmenting the habitats, which meant that tigers had less places to hide out and to maintain sufficient territories. The last Bali tigers were last documented in 1937, with a hunter killing a female tiger, though sightings persisted for many years. So a few individuals likely survived past this point and into the 1950s, though now, in all likelihood, are all but gone. The biggest slap in the face to the whole situation was the formation of the West Bali National Park in 1941, which came into place in order to protect Bali tigers and other animals in the region. But as per usual with a lot of human activity, came into place last minutes and with the damage already done. All that remains of them now is a few skulls, skins and bones and shows us just how vulnerable animals, even as impressive as Bali tigers, couldn't avoid the finality of extinction caused by a species fully in the know of how much devastation they cause. Bengal tigers are the quintessential and most well associated with the oval group we know as tigers, with them as a whole ranking as one of the world's most charismatic examples of living megafauna. White tigers are also known to occur on rare occasions in the wild from time to time, being a result of recessive leucism. Males and females have an average total length of 270 to 310 centimeters and 240 to 265 centimeters respectively. The standard weights for males range from 175 to 260 kilograms, while that of females range from 100 to 160. What's interesting is that Bengal tigers are consistently the largest tiger subspecies, being generally larger than the Siberian tiger, which is generally thought of as being bigger due to living in colder conditions and appearing larger due to their bulkier coats. While the largest tiger reliably recorded was indeed a Siberian and or Amur tiger, an individual by the name of Jaipur, who was a captive animal who measured up to 3.32 metres in length and weighing around 423 kilograms, this was an exceptional case, with there also being the factor of them being in captivity. The average in the wild is noted to be similar, and in many cases, Bengal tigers outweigh Siberian ones consistently, potentially down to the former, having larger gene pools and generally more prey access. Interesting to note is that tigers from the Bangladesh Sundarbans are very small compared with other populations, with three tigresses monitors in the region having a mean weight of 76.7 kilograms, which could be down to the combination of intense, intraspecific competition, the smaller size of prey available, and alongside skull differences coupled to the lower body weights, may indicate that they may have adapted to the unique conditions of the mangrove habitat. Bengal tigers are defined by three distinct mitochondrial nucleotide sites and 12 unique microsatellite alleles that help to distinguish them from other subspecies. The pattern of genetic variation in them also seems to indicate that they first arrived in India approximately 12,000 years ago, with this recent history of them in the region being consistent with the lack of tiger fossils from India prior to the late Pleistocene and the absence of them from Sri Lanka, which was separated from the subcontinent by rising sea levels in the early Holocene. A large majority of the population survives in India, although there are some in China, Bangladesh as mentioned, and Nepal as well, with them thriving in dry and wet, deciduous forests, grasslands and mangrove forests. 
Being apex predators, Bengal tigers target a wide range of both small and large prey animals, mostly targeting large ungulates like Cheetal, Sambar and Gar, as well as wild boar, muntjac and grow langurs. They will also hunt and kill other predators such as leopards, dole and bears. Although such occurrences are usually done under periods of stress considering how formidable a lot of these animals are. They generally do not do so, but extraordinary cases of them killing Indian elephants and rhinos have also happened. Breeding-wise, they reach sexual maturity between 3 and 5 years of age, with animals being otherwise solitary outside of breeding, which can occur at any time of the year. Although in regions with more tropical climates, it happens more frequently during the periods between November and April, when temperatures are colder. Males range further from their native home range after leaving their mothers, and afterwards when they reach breeding age, will attempt to contact nearby females through deep vocalisations, as you can see here. While being the most common subspecies, with an estimated 2,500 in the wild, they are currently threatened by numerous factors that have meant their recovery from near extinction is a precarious one. Poaching continues to be a large problem, with their coats and various other body parts like their bones still being highly prized in some international markets, both legal and illegal. Habitat loss has also led to extensive fragmentation and reduced gene flow, which has led to increasing conflicts with people, as they will occasionally prone livestock and people if they are unable to target their typical prey due to either injury or old age. Extensive conservation efforts have managed to boost their numbers, although they still remain as endangered, and their future is still a precarious one. Caspian tigers inhabited a vast region of Asia during the time they were around, being native to eastern Turkey, Iran, throughout the Caspian Sea, which is where the most commonly used name originates, as well as into Ukraine and western China. They are remarkably closely related to Siberian tigers, with phylogeographic analysis finding that the common ancestor colonised Central Asia via the Gansu Silk Road region from eastern China a remarkably short time ago, being under 10,000 years ago and only really becoming isolated due to fragmentation caused by industrialization in the areas where they lived. Compared to other tigers, then compared to Siberian and Bengal tigers, with them also having shades of brown on them, with their black stripes being relegated only on the middle backs, tip of their tails, as well as their head and neck. Their ears were also quite a bit shorter, with their full body colour being more of a gold through yellow, as well as having long and thick fur that was often seen to droop down quite extensively, all in order to cope with their cold conditions. Their extirpation and removal from several areas and eventual extinction came about through several factors, the main one being the mass killing by large parties of sportsmen and military personnel in the Soviet Union who aimed to reduce predator numbers across their territory. This was done to allow for more settlements and agricultural areas to be developed on without a risk of tigers interfering, with their preferred habitats being converted rapidly to plant and cotton and other crops that grew well in the rich silt along said rivers, something which was incredibly detrimental to them given their already restricted environment, since they were largely confined to water sources that were surrounded by large expanses of desert. A rise in disease in the early 1900s also led to a mass dive of pigs, one of their main food sources, so this didn't help them either. Caspian tigers were last reported in 1970, when one was claimed to have been shot in Turkey, which unfortunately put an end to them. Ideas to reintroduce their very close relatives, the Siberian tiger, into areas like Kazakhstan, where they used to roam, have been considered, so hopefully, tigers will once again roam areas of the Middle East once again, and this time without human interference and persecution. Indo-Chinese tigers are native to Southeast Asia, with them being distinguished from other subspecies by their skin coloration, marking pattern and skull dimensions. They are smaller and darker in colour than Bengal tigers, with them also having shorter and narrower stripes, alongside smaller skulls. Males average 3 metres from head to tail, and weigh about 180 kilograms, with females being about 2.4 metres and 115 kilograms. They were once lumped with the Malayan tigers due to apparent similarities, although since 2004 they have been regarded as separates due to genetic evidence. There is physical evidence too, which has since been more thoroughly understood as we learn more about them, as Malayan tigers are on average also smaller, being around 2 metres in length and having weights of around 120 kilograms. 
They live in remote forests covering hilly and mountainous terrain, and as such, it makes it difficult for scientists to gain access to the habitats and to collect data. As a result, little is known about their specific status and their habits, making them not only one of the more poorly known tigers, but of big cats in general. Their population has been estimated to be around 352 individuals as of 2011, although it has likely declined since due to continued poaching. They used to live in six countries, but they've since been reduced to only Thailand and Myanmar, with more than half of the total population surviving in the Western Forest Complex in Thailand, which mostly consists of tropical and subtropical broadleaf forests. They are the least represented subspecies in captivity, and are not a part of a coordinated breeding program, at least currently. As of 2007, 14 individuals were recognised as belonging to this subspecies based on genetic analysis of 105 captive animals in 14 countries. Javan tigers were native to, well, the Indonesian island of Java, and were the most recent of the tiger subspecies to go extinct. They were small compared to their other relatives, being most closely related to the living Sumatran and extinct Bali tigers. Javan tigers had the largest number of stripes, with them being very thin and long, with them also being most concentrated around their back region. Their noses were also narrower, having the longest whiskers of any tiger, with their paws being interestingly larger in diameter than those of Bengal tigers, which are a fair bit larger than themselves, with their function probably coming down to increased traction in the heavily forested environments. They inhabited much of the island until being forced to retreat to the more mountainous regions as human activity continued to degrade the island's forests and continued to be killed for bounties. They were continuously whittled away, until last being sighted in the early 1970s. While sightings continued after this point into the 80s, and some even occurring up until the present, nothing has yet come of them, and so likely don't survive today. The smallest mainland subspecies, Malayan tigers are native to the Malaysian Peninsula, once been classed as synonymous with the more northerly located Indo-Chinese tigers, although they were eventually found to be distinct. While there are no clear differences between them regarding this skulls or pillage, they were found to be on average smaller, with differences genetically also being noted. Debate on their scientific names soon arose, with the chairman of the Malaysian Association of Zoos, Parks and Aquaria arguing that the new subspecies be named Panthera tigris malayensis to reflect their geographical range, while others dubbed them Jacksoni in honour of Peter Jackson, not that one the former chair of the IUCN's cat specialist group who contributed significantly to tiger conservation. As a compromise, they received the common name Malayan tiger and the scientific name Jacksoni, although nevertheless, PC Malayensis was still used by some authors after the fact. Regardless of their name, Malayan tigers continue to remain in constant threat of extinction. They were classified in 2015 as critically endangered, with their numbers still being on the decline. Their population has been estimated to be as low as 150 individuals, and could very well become extinct in 10 to even 5 years if such decline continues. Deforestation and habitat fragmentation is the biggest issue for them, with areas of up to 64,800 km squares being lost or converted to large-scale plantations, all in a span of around 24 years. Commercial poaching also impacts them, evidence from an anti-poaching unit between 2014 and 2019, finding and removing 1,400 snares from protected areas. Siberian tigers, also known as Amur tigers after the river that flows through much of their habitats, they are considered alongside Bengal tigers as the largest of their group, with said larger size assisting them regarding their typically temperate to cold environments. Their fur is moderately thicker and coarser than other subspecies, thus alongside a 5cm layer of fat on their stomachs, allows them to survive in cold environments and other tigers. The fur around their necks is also thicker, and they also possess extra fur on their paws to assist in locomotion through thick snow. Their colour is overall more pale, especially during winter, although individual variation is considerable. The stripes have also been noticed to be in many cases a dark brown rather than black. They are also known for their large skulls, with their facial region being very powerful and broad in the region of their canines. The skull prominences, especially in the sagittal crest and occipitals, are very high and strong, especially in older males, often being much more massive than usually observed in comparable Bengal tigers. 
as well as targeting the typical ungulates, as many tigers do. They will, from time to time, prey on bears, which constitutes up to 2.1% of their diets. They target brown bears more often than the smaller Asian black bears, as the latter live in more closed habitats and can climb trees to better escape. Tigers are capable of killing them through ways of ambushing, leaping onto them from an overhead position and then grabbing them by the chin, with one forepaw and by the throat with the other, then killing them once properly subdued by biting their spinal column. Tigers also depress wolf numbers either to the point of localised extinction or to such low numbers as to make them a functionally insignificant component of the ecosystem due to intense competition, with them only appearing capable of escaping competitive exclusion from them only when human pressures decrease tiger numbers to low enough levels. This was observed clearly throughout the 20th century, as sightings of wolves increased as tigers decreased through hunting, showing just how quickly ecosystems can change when an outside factor is introduced. Said competitive exclusion of wolves by tigers has in fact been used by Russian conservationists to convince hunters in the Far East to tolerate the big cats, as they not only limit ungulate populations less than wolves due to their more sparse and widespread home ranges, but also being effective in controlling and or limiting wolf numbers. Siberian tigers once inhabited much of Manchuria and other parts of northeastern China, the Karina Peninsula, as well as the eastern part of Siberia and the Russian Far East, and perhaps as far west as Mongolia and the area of Lake Baikal, where the now extinct Caspian tiger also reportedly lived around. Unfortunately, in the 1940s, they were on the brink of extinction, with only about 40 animals remaining in the wilds in Russia. As a result, the Soviet Union introduced anti-poaching controls and a network of protected zones in 1947 that sought help in boosting their numbers, leading to a population rise of up to several hundred. Today, around 500 of them exist, mainly in eastern Russia's vast birch forests or taiga, as well as around northeast China. Sedge recovery is assisted by their large home ranges, the largest of any taiga subspecies, up to 450 km squares, due to their need to search over large areas to find foods due to lower prey densities. Russia's timber industry is also currently at least less extensive than that of many other countries. Whilst with a positive increase, and with numbers remaining stable in recent years, the subspecies still remains endangered. While their large habitat areas means that they have less of a chance of coming into conflicts with people, the sheer size of their territories means that any fragmentation or crowding by potential future developments would prove to be catastrophic for an already heavily reduced population. Their populations exhibit low genetic variability and appear to be bottlenecked due to the aforementioned hunting during the 1940s. The global captive population is rather unusually more diverse genetically, so it might be that the founders of the captive population were captured before said bottleneck occurred. From other such genetic work, it has also been found that Siberian tigers are closer related to Caspian tigers, with there being a noticed low amount of variability between them, with them sharing a very recent common ancestry. They appear to have diverged around 10,000 years ago, meaning that their genetic variation may not have been too high to begin with. Some researchers, because of this, have suggested that they be considered distinct, or the most consider them to still be different given other genetic and phenotypic factors. South China tigers are initially distinguished from other tigers by their skull shapes, which differ slightly in shape from Bengal tiger skulls, as well as when compared to other tigers from different regions. Their carnassials and molars were noted to be shorter than in the Bengal tiger samples, with the cranial region being shorter, with orbits set closer together, alongside the post-orbital processes being larger. Interestingly, sightings of a reported but unconfirmed unusual blue colours or Maltese morph were made around 1910, around the Fujian province, which were reported on by Harry Caldwell and notable explorer Roy Chapman Andrews. Their genetics are also interesting, as they have been noted to have a unique mtDNA haplotype, which alongside the results of a phylogeographic study, indicated that southern China was likely the centre of Pleistocene tiger radiation. Because of this, South China tigers are considered a relic population of the stem or basal tigers, and as such, could very well represent the most basal subspecies still surviving. Their historical range stretched over a vast landscape of 2,000 km from east to west and 1,500 km from north to south in China. Their population was also likely connected to the Siberian tiger population through corridors in the Yellow River Basin throughout the late Pleistocene and Holocene, before humans interrupted said gene flow. 
By the early 1950s, their population was reported to number around 4,000 individuals in the wilds when they became the targets of large-scale government anti-pest campaigns conducted by Mao Zedong's Great Leap Fours. Set effects of unregulated hunting were compounded on by extensive deforestation and reductions in prey availability, which led to increasing fragmentation and vulnerability. By 2001, field studies carried out in eight protected areas encompassing 2,214 km squares found no sign or evidence of tigers. Sightings continued well into the 2000s, although they are now considered possibly extinct in the wilds. All that remains of them, at least from what is known, is a captive population of over 100 individuals, with most being in Chinese zoos and breeding centres, with the remainder being in the care of Save China's Tigers at Slauhu Valley Reserve in South Africa, with the eventual goal of them being relocated to suitable areas in China once their numbers and diversity are high enough. Concerns regarding the projects include said availability of suitable habitats, given the still vast presence of rural China as well as the fitness of the captive population, although said project does and has conducted a rehabilitation process for the animals. Susan breeding areas in China have taken steps to eventually prepare for releases, with South China tigers, despite their low numbers and genetic diversity, still have variability like species which have themselves proven successful regarding captive conservation programs. As such, South China tigers do have the potential for population growth that alongside well-coordinated genetic management may mean that these animals may soon return to the wilds of China sooner rather than later. Sumatran tigers live on the Indonesian island of Sumatra and the smallest living subspecies of tiger, with animals being around 2.5 metres long and weighing from around 75 to 140 kilograms. Their fur and stripes also distinguishes them from other subspecies, with their fur being darker overall in colour, and their stripes being broader and closer together, with their frequency also being higher. This allows them to better blend in to their tropical rainforest habitats, which is often denser and darker than other tiger habitats. Their stripes also extend to their forelegs, which not all tigers possess. Males also have a prominent rough and or mane-like growth around their heads and necks, something that further distinguishes them from mainland tigers. The reasons for their small size are unclear, although it is likely due to insular dwarfism to adapt to both competition for limited prey and the smaller ranges. Analysis of sequences from complete mitochondrial genes is also consistent with the hypothesis that they became isolated from other tiger populations after rising sea levels that occurred at the Pleistocene to Holocene border about 12 to 6,000 years ago. They persist in small and fragmented populations across Sumatra, from sea level to up to 3,200 metres in mountain forests, although this range is severely threatened, especially due to them not being found on the Asian mainland. Major threats include habitat loss due to the expansion of palm oil and acacia plantations, as well as prey depletion and illegal poaching, with snares still to this day being cleaned up in some of the most remote areas of the island. Their population today numbers around 618 plus or minus 290 individuals by 2017, and as the last remaining subspecies in the Sundar Islands, their conservation and their survival is key in preserving such unique animals. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whatever that may be.